Welcome back, Hunters! I'm the Survival Miss, and we return to Monster Hunter World Iceborne, where there is a very special mod I need, need, to show you guys. This isn't a, oh, it's cool, like, this is a really nice mod, like, say, how the little guy Chris like, bowgun is. No, this addresses an issue World and Iceborne both had, which was a kind of a fundamental cripple for some aspects of the game. Now, the issue I'm talking about is... The way the, the mods describe it is they are called slap-on weapons. They are that simple bone and metal base that had some weapon, some monster parts stuck onto them to change them up. What if I told you all, a mod came out that gives all those slapped-on weapons, like anything that was an iron base with a slapped-on Kulu Yaku, Brachydeos parts, there was a mod that gave those unique models. It came out and is called the No More Slap on Weapons. So I'm going to go in and show you what I mean by that. I just have to scroll up a little bit on that mod page. This is by T.W. John, or T.W.J.O.N. I'm actually not sure how they prefer pronunciation. But what this mod does is it's imported back a lot of models from, I think, Monster Hunter... Four Ultimate and maybe Generations, because in their credits they credit a lot of 3DS stuff, or there's credit to the 3DS hacking for being able to retrieve the models. So, let's see, what's a good example to start with? You know what, let's just take a little look-see. Oh, there we go, already found one. You know how Lunastra Light Bogue was basically just an iron base? Yeah, nope. This is a bit different, isn't it? This is actually one of the weapons I'm not sure exactly which one it is. I think this is actually, like, the Generations, that fancy musket from the, like, ancient shards you could get in Generations, but... That's what this mod does, is any weapon that had a parts to it was replaced with a unique model. Now, the base iron and bone, like, model, the foundation for all of the slap-on weapon looks, there's a optional one to make them What's invisible, making? so... Like, if I go into here and I were to, say, look at upgrading equipment for... Uh, do... Let's say the Aqua Shot here. No, not the Aqua Shot, sorry. Um, oh. Okay, not that one. I need something that's actually, like, in this area. The Dragon Seal Bowgun. Here we go. This is one that was just the bone. No parts to it. There's a part of the mod that turns it invisible, and that has to kind of be used in order to pull off what the mod does, because it's the weapon parts that get the model applied to them. So like the cross blitzer, which was just the iron base, it's rendered invisible in order for other things like the black wing bow gun to look like that, which you guys will probably recognize as the Onguruga light bow gun. And this isn't just for like light bow guns. This is every weapon class has been given something. Bow, charge blade, dual blade, insect blade, great sword, gun lance, hammer, all weapon classes have gotten some treatment to them. And there are some really nice looks. Now, there's not too many, like, new custom models, but what they've done is basically sort of, like, grandfathered in the models from, like, For You or Generations and applied new textures to bring them into World. Like, let's try to find another one. Ah, uh, do, do, do. Oh, this is actually a nice one. I love what they did with this. They turned the Xenogiva weapons into actually being the Safi model, but with, like, the Xeno texturing to them. And I really do like this change to them, because it does make it feel a little more drawn in line to Safi and Xeno have a relation between one another. So that was a really nice change. And I'm going to show some heavy, some light and heavy bow guns, because, like, this, this addresses one of the biggest problems that there was in World of the Niceborn so well. Okay, let's see. That one, no. Yeah, that's the Ivory Logiacris I'm still using. Okay, Blossom, uh, do, 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 Ghost, the Brachydeo shot. We got the Brachy Light Bow Gun from Raging Brachy, but this is what it looked like just as regular Brachydeos' weapon. And another nice thing about the Light Bow Gun and What's the Heavy Bow making? Gun is you can actually augment the equipment so they have their proper, like, silencers or long barrels to them. Like, I can change that out of silencer, or just take it off entirely, or it's on. Like, this is amazing what's been compiled together for this mod, and... As long as you have 
I probably recommend getting this once you have the base story of Iceborne done, so that way you're not using a weapon that's mostly just like an iron or bone base and it's become invisible for you. But there's Nargakuga has its light bow gun back, and it has, again, the double barrel shotgun or the like owl face. It's just amazing what they've been able to do. There, I do see a little issue where it seems to have retained the light for the scope, but that's not too... Like, for what you get for the rest of the model, I have no issue with that little hiccup or that little problem there. I mean, not even a problem, just a little something left over. But then there's also new ways, like, this is Beotodus's light bow gun now. It looks awesome. And this is actually the Xamtrios light bow gun, which... Perfect way of blending both the old model and bringing it forward with the new. And then it even does have... Wow. The Zamtrios Light Bow Guns change up where you have the... Duh, 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 I gotta find it in here. Where you can give it the long barrel, which is actually like the shark jaws clamped together and sticking out like that. So it is amazing what this mod is able to bring forward and how it can change up like all your... Oh lord, what? Okay, I guess... Ah, I guess this controller has a little bit of a stick and trigger. The Fulger Shot is another nice one. I actually... This might be a complete custom model, the more I look at it, because... Like, I don't know what they would have used before it, but this is amazing. And another thing is, if you watch the silencer there, you actually have, like, the light effect that the armor gets. And this is another one that reminds me. where it actually might have more of, like, a custom... Uh, power barrel to it. Like, what's... Yeah, long barrel, that's it. So there are things like that which have been brought in, so... Y these things look like they have their own custom models some in some ways, or other ones... They are models that fit the monster previously for things. Like, let me try to find... We'll do one more light bow gun, and then we'll move on to some heavy bow guns. Oh! There's a classic. Now, the Silver Rathalos light bow gun was basically just, again, the simple iron or bone. Now, it's the proper Argent Ray, which is kind of like how the Rathian light bow gun was. But, like, it's stuff like that. It's incredible that this was able to be brought in like this. And it's an ingenious way of working within the limitations, but also surpassing them. Like, take a look at Seething Basils now. And I do recognize the base of it. This is actually, I think, the Celtus Queen's light bow gun. But it's been so modified, you might have a hard time recognizing that. Like, it's this kind of ingenuity and also really amps up some weapons to make them amazing. I think that's it for the light bow guns I'll show you guys. But then, like, Glavness and Acidic Glavness have gotten that treatment as well. And as for heavy bow guns, let me try to find a nice one. The Royal Light Cortege, no, that's not one. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, this is a good example of why I say like the weapons and the parts have to be a bit different. Now this is the Lunastra heavy bow gun, and it's yeah, it didn't have the cannon before, but because it has the slapped-on parts of Xenogiva, you kind of have this weird cross between them. So if you're going to use any of these weapons as, like, a layered look, you'll have to take off the... I think it's the parts you need taken off. We'll actually check that right now. Just so that way I'm not giving you guys any misinformation regarding it. Yeah, you'll want to take the parts off, and then the base is the main look that you'll want to keep for the weapons. You can do some odd amalgamations if you want to leave the parts on, I suppose, but... I think for the best results, it is to just take the parts off and use the base, but then there's... Now, well, that was a little preview to one. Like, look at the Xenogika now. Like, I have to admit, this was a really great idea of using the heavy bow guns Or the Xeno stuff to relate with the Safi. The texture is a little odd just because, like, the orange spots kind of stand out, but I still, I really like this method of how I did it much better than, like, the slap-on. 
And then let's see, where's another one? Oh, this is actually a really unique looking one. I'm not sure. I feel like this could even be like a full custom model. But this is the Namiel Heavy Bowgun now, and you can see it is glorious. Take a look. Oh, I didn't even notice that the power barrel is like the tridents on it. It's just amazing to see what they could do with it. I really, I really feel like this could be a complete custom model, but I may be mistaken on it too. It's just some of them are very well done and they add so much more to monsters that really could have used these unique looks. Ah, uh, did do? Ah, uh, where's another good one? That one, no. Not that one, not that one. This is an interesting one for, like, Toby Kodachi. They use the... I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. It's, I think, sort of like a crossover-ish kind of weapon, but it still kind of fits Toby because of the texture work on it. But it's cool things like that which really have me so impressed with this mod and just like... Oh. Oh, here's a good one. Dodogama had just like a basic heavy bowgun. Now he's got basically like a giant magnum revolver that you can use. It lets you really open up looks and it's so to me it really does solve that one issue that Iceborne has had. And I am I'm going to be a little biased because of one I'll be showing you guys. Well, this is one of them. Like you guys know how I really like the honk tonk gun from uh, 3 Ultimate with Kuropeko. A perfect fit for Curl Puke Puke. This is just the Tropeco gun with some texture work changed, and it looks fantastic. Like, oh, these are amazing. I can't show you all 14 weapons of like all the different ones, but I, I'll leave a link in the description of the video where you can check this mod out for yourself, and I would recommend it. It adds so much, and I do admit I have a little bit of a personal favorite among them, because as you can see, one of the my favorite heavy bow guns that I've been using in the three ultimate series is available to be used too. The Flatodeus, Mobideus, whatever you want to call it, Sedeus' heavy bow gun is here and you can use it. Oh, it's just so amazing. I actually want to check and see, could I oh. augment this to actually have both the power barrel and a shield on it at the same time? Oh no, that's going to be a customized bow gun option. Like, am I actually going to be able to mix the two? Because that's one thing about the current... You can get the mix! Oh, that's awesome. Like, it's a very subtle detail that's very hard to see. But you actually can get... If you put a shield onto the Mobideus, it's basically like a little Sedeus beard. And now, because of how Iceborne has layered armor and layered weapons, you can have both the power barrel and the layered on at once with the heavy bow guns. Oh, this is amazing. So this is the No More Slap-On Weapons, made by T.W. John, or T.W.J.O.N. The link is going to be in the description. Oh, this really does, to me, solve one of Iceborne and World's biggest issues was the Slap-On Weapons. Now, we can have custom things. And, again, it is for every single weapon, so let me just quickly go through the item box. I won't equip everything, but I have a few, like, Cult stuff saved over. So you can see, like, that's quite the great sword to use. Basically, just a giant fist you can be swinging around with some chains on it. And they're... It's not like they all the same ones carried over. It's a bunch of unique new ones and different ones. Like, I think that... Is that Plesioth or that might actually be Ass? That's either Plesioth or Astalos. I'm not sure, to be honest, which one. But there's stuff like that... Uh, dual blades, I actually want to see. Do I have the Bracadios? Oh no, let's try actually making or upgrading the Bracadios, because that was always one of the big weapons that was always kind of brought forward. Like, you would really see as it stands out for what it shouldn't have been. Okay, I gotta figure out because I don't really. Ah, uh, dual blades. Okay, let's go to the upgrade tree. So there's a note. Actually. I don't know if Zenogre kept those, or those are ones brought in by the mod. It's hard to say at this point, to be honest. Yeah, so cool. So Zitsuyaku actually has a unique set of dual blades, which are like those big fans. There's the hidden tomahawks for Narga. Basil Bombers got some... Actually, I think that's... Those might even be the Gypsaros dual blades. 
it's just amazing what they've done with the mod. Like Root Tigrex and Tigrex. This is an interesting one where you have the Golden Rathian and Silver Rathlos mixed like that. Uh, do, 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 do. Come on, Anjanath. Uh, Fulgur Anjanath. Ooh, actually, they've got a different look, so I can't really see them from the preview. The Acidic Glavness got a new pair, that's for sure. Banbro. I think Banbro got a new pair too, because those do not look like they were standard issue for World and Iceborne. Totus there. Oh yeah, that's definitely... Like, look at that for dual blades. This is where... Oh, this mod has done so good. Yeah, there you go. Proper Bracadios. Ah, uh, dual blades. And let's say you want a Glavness Greatsword. They got you covered. They got you covered. I just gotta find it. There it is. They got you covered with the proper Glavness Greatsword. And I think... Is there even uh, an Acidic Glavness? No, oh, maybe not. I thought was that was one maybe that we would see, but... Yeah, so they've got you covered for, like, a lot of new weapons that just didn't have unique models before. And it's very, very good to see. Oh, there is an Acidic Glavness right here. And you can see, it is the proper retexture of the Glavness, so... Again, I'll leave the link in the description for you guys. I just had to do a video on this because it just fixes one of the things that was always kind of really obvious and apparent with Iceborne and World. So thank you very much, T.W. Jean, or again, I apologize, I don't know your favorite pronunciation of it, T.W. J.O.N. This has been amazing, and I hope bigger channels also showcase this, because this deserves all the attention it gets. It's amazing to see how you were able to take these old models, not only bring them into World Niceborn, but also change the textures to make them fit so well. Oh, it's incredible. I'm going to leave this here before I keep rambling into another rant about it, but again, link is right in the description. You guys head there, you can get the fi files for yourself. It's pretty straightforward installation. Oh, I just love them seeing this Mobideus or the Sedeus's like bow or heavy bow gun brought forward like this. It's beautiful. It really is. But in the meantime, thank you all very much for joining me on this special episode of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. If you guys do like the video or even want to see more mod showcases like this, let me know in the comments, because I, I'd love to bring more Monster Hunter onto the channel, and this is a good way to do it. And if you do like the video, again, like, and any comments, tips, tricks, always appreciated. Leave them right down below in the comments. Until I see you all in the next video, those survivors and hunters, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy hunting.